there's a lot of uh, fascinating science coming out talking about how your brain and your gut microbiome or gut bacteria are actually linked together to work together. They're not independent of one another. And therefore, it's how your brain can influence your gut health and vice versa, how your gut microbiome can influence the function of your brain, including your mood and your personality. And in the science paper we're going to be investigating today, it talks about, finally, they're looking at figuring out how your gut bacteria can influence your emotions. Yes, you heard that, right? <laughs> That's right. There is this, this uh, connection is back and forth and literally the state of health of your gut based on what kind of bacteria it has can literally influence your emotional state. So my name is Dr. Mikola Rashik of Mara Genomics and let's break this down. First of all, this video is being sponsored by a company that produces Vegas nerve neuromodulation devices. Why? Because this link we're talking about is via Vegas nerve. And I've been doing a lot of videos on how to modulate the function of the vagus nerve, right? But I can also get to make videos that talk about the biology of vagus nerve. And this is a perfect example. Just what we continuously discovering about how important the vagus nerve is for your well-being, your health. So, and by the way, there's a link in the description below if you're interested in such a device. This device is certified for medical use in, on the European market. If you're interested in such a device, there's a link in the description where you can get a discount for it. So check that out. All right, so then let's get started here on, on this topic. So what do we know from the background is that your, your personal state, mental state, can influence the health of your gut microbiome. It's already been known that before. So for example, if you're really stressed, this can reduce a specific probiotic bacteria in your gut. These are of the lactobacilli species. And as a consequence, your gut microbiome is not gonna be healthy. That's called dysbiosis. And when that happens, basically you provide the opportunity for pathogenic, opportunistic pathogens to come and infect you. So not a good state. We do know that mucus, is also involved in this process. And the reason why is because same idea, if you get really stressed, it's known that mucus level can be reduced, that, it, that your body will produce, will be reduced. And again, that can lead to these opportunistic infections. So, and it's also known that, that uh, the opposite is true. If you say reduce your stress level, something that vagus nerve neuromodulation is very effective at, you can restore that probiotic bacteria and you can restore gut health as well. All right, so then, but exactly how the brain affects the microbiome, meaning your bacteria composition in the gut via this mucus release, is not fully understood. And this is what the authors of, of the study wanted to figure it out. They wanted to get more background information on this. And uh, let's break it down as to what they, what they did. <clears throat> so then talk, let's talk about a little bit about the mucus. What is mucus? Mucus is basically this gooey substance that can be produced by your body that covers your both your small and large intestines and it's like a barrier between your body your tissue and the bacteria now this mucus is produced by special glands which are i think they're called bruner's glands they're either way they're they are positioned in your duodenum which is which is uh, part of your small intestines that that is present right after the stomach and that's where the mucus gets produced and and then it ends up covering your small and large intestines intestines and of course these glands that produce the mucus they are innervated by nerves and that includes the vagus nerve so all the studies that the authors did were on mice and i gotta tell you, tell you trigger warning because whenever scientists do experiments on mice you have to understand that eventually these mice are euthanized because uh, of the fact that complicated things are being done to them and that's just the unfortunate part, but that's how we also understand biology. 
And the reason why mice are so frequently used in science is because it allows scientists to to genetically engineer mice. So you can so many mice that, that are used in experiments are literally specific genetic constructs and they're genetically engineered to have specific genes. So let me give you an example because they use some incredible, absolutely stunning, stunning experiments in, in, um, in this study that is, shows you how sometimes how scientists have to be super imaginative in order to, to figure out how to support the hypothesis they have. And this is a perfect example. So they use mice that were genetically engineered to have a special bacteria protein present inside their specific tissue. So basically what it meant is that these mice were genetically engineered in such a way that this bacteria protein was, was being produced only by cholinergic nerves. Cholinergic nerves are the nerves that are involved in the, in, uh, the parasympathetic system, nervous system, so the vagus nerve, so the ones that relaxes you, some of the, some of the sympathetic system as well, so the one that's fight or flight response, and the nerves that control your muscle movements. Why? Because these cholinergic nerves use acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter to exact their functions, okay? So they engineered mice, or they were using mice that were engineered genetically in such a way that all of these nerves, cholinergic nerves, were producing this specific bacterial protein called Cre recombinase. And what this specific bacterial protein, think of a tiny little robot, tiny little molecular robot was doing is it can manipulate genetic information. So it cuts and splice specific ge uh, genetic information. Having that, that specific effect allowed them to, to do the following. Basically, it allowed them to introduce a virus that could no longer replicate, introduce a virus that, that had, a specific, um, had a role to produce a specific protein called green fluorescence protein. So you can think of it, it's very similar to the vaccine, for example, like natural vaccines can sometimes use, indeed, uh, do the same thing. It uses a virus construct that cannot replicate, but it provides genetic information to the body to produce specific foreign protein. Same thing, same idea. This foreign protein that they were introducing via this pseudovirus was green fluorescent protein, which basically means is that if this protein were to be produced, the tissue where the protein will be produced will fluoresce. And this allows these scientists to track exactly where this virus spreads throughout the body because the body will literally fluoresce green color. Absolutely stunning, right? And the way that they could track this is because when they, in, they what they did is they took that pseudovirus with the genetic information for this fluorescent protein and they literally injected it into area of the brain, midbrain, that gives birth to the vagus nerve tentacles that go descend down to the body. Check out one of my past videos where I explain exactly the anatomy of the vagus nerve and how that's all distributed. So they injected that pseudovirus and then that pseudovirus started to spread through the vagus nerve. And remember, the, this vagus nerve had this bacterial protein that was able to manipulate the virus genetic information. And only after that manipulation could the fluorescent protein be produced and they were able to track it. And in this way, they were able to show that those glands that produce mucus, they were able to literally show through green fluorescence, how the vagus tentacles end up right there uh, in that, in those around those glands. Absolutely amazing. The reason why I tell you all this is because this will be important to another experiment that they also, they also did. So that's one thing. Then they wanted to know, okay, how do we control and learn more about this entire system? And they use this hormone, pro-digestive hormone, which by the way is also controlled by the vagus nerve, and they fed it to these mice and what they were able to observe that once these mice ha had access to this pro-digestive hormone, then the level of that lactobacilli probiotic bacteria increased in both small and large intestine as well as in the poop of mice. So that's good. That means these mice were obviously their gut microbiome was being healthy. But they also used genetic mice that were constructed in such a way that if you give them this specific chemical to eat, 
it resulted in self-destruction of those specific glands that produce the mucus. So literally, they were, they were, they're just not there anymore. So that means such mice would no longer be able to produce mucus. And this, when they did that, and they used such mice with no glands anymore, and they fed them this pro-digestive pro hormone, after that, these mice were no longer, no longer showing increase in that probiotic lactobacilli bacteria. In fact, the opposite was happening. These mice were now suddenly showing increase in pathogenic bacteria. And these mice were also showing that their spleen, spleens, which are important for your immune system, were also uh, starting to appear abnormal. Their morphology was not normal. And these mice were suddenly dramatically more prone to die. So clearly very unhealthy state would be just because these glands that were supposed to produce mucus were no longer there. So then they wanted to know, all right, how do we fix this problem for these mice? Is there a way to, to basically overcome this? And they, what they did is they injected probiotic solution to such mice that had no glands to produce mucus. They injected probiotic solution straight to their intestines, large intestine, and that solved everything. All of the problems, that spleen morphology that was abnormal, that went back to normal. They no longer had opportunistic infections. They had normal body weight and they were not dying like crazy. So they were able to solve this. But here is the cool, cool experiment that they did now in reverse to the one I was telling you about a moment ago where they remember with that fluorescent tracking system that allowed these authors to track fluorescence amongst uh, different tissues expressing these nerve cells expressing that specific bacterial protein. Well, they did that in reverse. Instead of injecting the pseudovirus that would allow to track the, the vagus nerve from the brain to the, to the small intestine where the mucus glands were, they did it in reverse. They injected such a pseudovirus into the glands themselves. And this allowed them now to track the vagus nerve from the glands all the way to the brain. And the reason why they wanted to do it this way in reverse, because they were curious, is there anything above the vagus nerve that controls the vagus nerve in order to control those mucus glands? And they did find something. And they found that not only did the vagus nerve neurons sh show up, started to fluoresce in the, in the midbrain, also another section of the brain started to show up and fluoresce, and that was amygdala. And why is, why is that interesting? Why, why is amygdala's involvement interesting? Because amygdala, the small part of your brain, is deeply linked into controlling your emotions. So that's how they link that together. Very, very interesting. So the, what they did next is they did that same experiment where they injected that pseudovirus in the glands in the small intestines, but they cut the vagus nerve. They literally severed it around the abdomen. And guess what? It no longer, not only was not showing the lighting up of the vagus neurons in the brain, amygdala was also not showing up anymore. You could not have that fluorescence inside the amygdala. So by severing, literally cutting the vagus nerve, they also severed the connection between those mucus glands themselves and, and, the, and the amygdala. So why is this interesting, amygdala? Because amygdala is, as I mentioned, linked to controlling your emotions, but especially, specifically, your emotion of, of fear and anxiety. So, so uh, why that's interesting? Because we do know that vagus nerve neuromodulation is especially powerful at helping you deal with anxiety or depression symptoms. And now we're learning that it's the amygdala via vagus nerve that could be controlled mucus release in your gut and therefore control the proper health of your, of your gut microbiome. So very, very interesting link. And it was, uh, so this could be an, such a fascinating way of how proper vagus nerve function could be restoring your health. And uh, also from the past, it's been known that one of the ways that vagus nerve neuromodulation or how vagus nerve itself influences that probiotic 
lactobacilli presence in the gut is by increasing or not increasing affecting level of the specific specific um, neurotransmitter called GABA and the reason why that's interesting because GABA neurotransmitter also happens to be the one that is especially used in amygdala so you can see how the, you're learning these new links that all starting to fall into place very very interesting and I'll end it with the last comment on this topic, <laughs> which I also thought was fascinating, is that apparently amygdala is not just linked to these emotions I mentioned, especially like, like the fear, conditioned fear and anxiety, but apparently it's also involved in controlling your hunting, predatory hunting instinct. So <laughs> I thought it was interesting. Mm, I wonder how does the vagus nerve work in terms of affecting that instinct. So all right, that's it uh, I have for you today in this video. I, there's lots of fantastic science right now showing you how the brain and the gut are, are linked together. They are not independent of one another. This is so fascinating. They work together and influence each other at the same time via the vagus nerve. So uh, we are discovering lots of cool information and uh, i've been really enjoying studying studying that information when it comes to how important vegas nerve is in controlling your gut health as well as 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 well as your mental health because of the connection between the two all right that's that i'm gonna wrap it up right there and i look forward to seeing you in another installment bye everyone